O'Malley Shoe question, and their uncertainty. L. O.J. Simpson in alleged Bruno O'Malley Shoe's photo seen in his 1997 civil trial and R. FBI Special Agent William Bajak who determined that the shoes in 1994 were Bruno O'Malley found at the murder site. Dan Petrocelli and his associate minions go on and on, about alleged size 12 Bruno O'Malley shoes, that showed up in photos in 1997 in time for Simpson's civil trial. However, what makes the photos of Simpson in these alleged Bruno O'Malley shoes suspicious is that they didn't they show up in 1994 when they were allegedly found or by 1995 when the FBI special agent, who found them, William Bajak, was first presenting them at trial on the witness stand as being veritable evidence that they were the Bruno Mali brand of shoes. Well, down below is Simpson's foot traced into a tracing of the size 12, or actually size 46, silk U2887 rubber shoe sole which was attached to the bottom of the Bruno Mali shoes that they want to place Simpson's feet in. However, we have several problems with them doing that starting with the size of Simpson's foot, seen in green in the photo on the right side below and alongside the size 12 silga black rubber sole on the left. One can see that Simpson's green foot given to us by Dr. Henry Johnson's investigative team, OMIG, indicates a foot allegedly belonging to Simpson that extends outside of the U2887 size 12 silga, Bruno Mali, shoe sole. Even though we qualify it with the words alleged. We've examined the size 46 slash size 12 U2887 shoe sole and we have shaken the massively long hands of Simpson which are much larger than the average size man's hands, and are symmetrically proportioned with his feet. So if anyone wants to offer us a one-to-one -one bet, we'll take the position that Simpson's foot is accurately portrayed in the green photo tracing and does not fit into the size 12 Bruno Mali shoe with the Silka U2887 sole attached. For such an expensive shoe, it certainly presents an image of a very uncomfortable and visually unbecoming shoe in regard to its fit. This could have been resolved by Agent Bajak simply going to the central jail in Los Angeles County and measuring the exact dimensions of OJ's foot but his arrogance of presumption is his excuse during testimony of not doing so, and confirming such an important fact in this so-called trial of the century. So the question now becomes did Bajak simply inadvertently fail to determine the trustworthiness of the evidence that he was presented, or did he intentionally jeopardize the preeminent integrity of the FBI's name and image? Given the fact that the FBI had previously been involved in a scandal of this magnitude 23 years earlier in Los Angeles, albeit not televised at the time, they may have made a critical decision to secretly gamble and back Bajak in order to save their name and reputation from past years' embarrassment. I cannot imagine their being pleased with Mr. Bajak's actions of placing their persona in jeopardy with the public, however, they may have been forced to get in bed with him until this matter calmed down and hopefully evaporated. However, with OMIG investigators nothing it seems ever calms down for them to stop looking at the irregularities in the Simpson case. You see in the immediate photos above, in both the one on the left and the one on the right, with the Silga size 12 U2887 shoe sole held in Bajak's hand, the location in the middle of the shoe in front of the heel, is the identification plug for the brand of shoe. Silga left an empty space in its shoe soles so that the brand's identification plug could be placed inside that hole. These soles were shipped like that with an empty space to whatever company to which it sold this shoe sole from its U2887 rubber mold. Notice that the heel of the shoe is raised, so that it also raises the area where the identity plug is located off of the ground as well, which you can see in the prints made by the shoe sole on the left. This style of shoe sole was not only sold to Bruno Mali for its brand of shoes carrying the U2887 Silga shoe sole, but Silga sold the shoes sold to another company that owned 20 various brands of shoes beyond the nation of Italy where Bruno Mali was manufactured. This is according to the words of the special agent, Mr. Bajak, himself. Unfortunately, he would not elaborate on it during the actual Simpson criminal trial in 1995, but would do so in a re-edited 1999 second edition of his 1981 college textbook. Footwear Impression Evidence, Detection, Recovery, and Examination Thus, we have a problem with Special Agent Bajak's method of arriving at his empirical conclusion, which was right on the money as far as others, like Petrocelli, have concluded. He and others would have you believe by 1997, that these were in fact Bruno Mali shoes in a picture of O.J. Simpson wearing them that had not been photo manipulated, even though it was disclosed during the civil trial that the all-important negatives of Simpson allegedly wearing these shoes had by 1997 traveled outside of the US to a European destination whose intelligence agency was noted for fraudulent photo manipulation. However, 
we can only conclude that maybe the cost was estimated for attempting to flim-flam the public and certain people in decision-making positions determined that it was a price they were willing to pay after Bajak had left the Simpson trial witness stand. It is our position that due to the design of the raised heel of Silgaz U2887 Seoul, it was no way for Special Agent Bajak to determine that the shoe prints in the photo were made by Bruno Mali or 20 other global brands in 1994 or 1995. So, the question that we, who are not convinced of Mr. Bajak's clairvoyant skills, is how did he objectively determine that these shoes were Bruno Mali shoes? We know that based upon the demonstrations shown us at OMIG's office, they certainly don't believe it, and until Bajak provides a prudent explanation, I'm afraid I don't believe him either. Furthermore, it is unimaginable to us that any prudent professional representing the FBI, would publicly place the integrity of the brand of the most preeminent investigative agency in the world on the line in a 20 to 1 gamble. To do so, with the backup of assuming that the only persons wearing such shoes soles were people who bought them from the 299 pair of Bruno Mollies owned by the North American distributor, was purely reckless. The brand itself is not identified in any of the bloody shoe print photos taken at the Bundy murder site due to the raised heel, thus Bajak in our opinion was engaging in a shell game with the integrity of the FBI put on the line. Until the American public is presented a full exposure to the truth behind the Simpson case, they will continue to be misinformed and misled. They shall continue to be taken for fools via the use of duplicitous actions on the part of sworn officers of the court utilizing the media in a one-sided manner to continue presenting a lie, based upon a false narrative regarding O.J. Simpson. This man was used as a guinea pig to see how far they could go with duping the American public for their own clandestine pecuniary interests. I suspect that Daniel Petrocelli's hair is going to get much whiter than it is now, worrying about whether this alleged ongoing lie is going to catch up to him. Though he may appear to look better than the bloated fat boy face of the 90s he displayed, our suspicion is that Petrocelli is losing weight behind those hidden lies in hope that they are never exposed. That's what makes these people dangerous, because they have engaged in activity that potentially foments danger for all on both sides of this matter, and what makes this whole affair a crock full of excruciatingly awful-smelling bad. Very bad.